Well, Christopher, once again, we welcome you with this lovely introduction. So nice of you for coming here. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. Before I jump to the question, mm -hmm. would you like to say something more about you so that we can proceed further? Probably what I would like to say about myself is that if you've got a dream, mm -hmm. you go after it. Um, what I've what I want to tell people is it doesn't matter where you're at in life, doesn't matter what you're going through, and it even doesn't matter if you see many rainy days, many dark times. If you've got a dream, mm. know this. If you believe in it enough in your mind, you can see it in your heart. Just mm -hmm. keep going after your dream, no matter what. Don't let people knock you down. You just you keep going no matter what, and I assure you, you'll achieve it. Belief, your reality is a reflection of your mind. Never give up on yourself. Correct. Very correct. Yes. We too have a dream. And you will really love to know the dream that Anshu has, our main person behind this platform, that she wants to create this platform so powerful that she will supersede the TED Talk. And I'm sure very soon we are going to have that position. Because in a very short time, we have already launched more than 3,000, 3, I repeat, 3,000 clips on various platforms. And every day we are proceeding further, further and further. Well, Christopher, let me jump to the questions that my listeners have sent me so that I can ask you. Here is the questions that I would like to get answer from you. Sure. Has you said every uh, number of times that where the center point is nothing but love. Well, Christopher, if you lead with the love and you frequently emphasize leading with love and service, can you unpack what that means to you in practice? How do you translate these values in tangible leadership actions? Christopher, please platform is yours? Uh, that's a great question. The best way I can answer that or how would you demonstrate love and leadership? It's it's this um, leadership isn't a title. That's one thing that I want to emphasize. Leadership isn't title. It's not attachment. It's not anything that you can say is my identity. You know, I was once told that we can be a talker mm -hmm. or a walker. Yeah. Now, what I've learned in life, what I've learned with leadership, how do you lead with love is it's all well and good to talk love. However, love has to be reflected in your actions. You've got to be love. And I've learned the greatest challenge people will ever face is you can talk love. But how do you be love? And that's what I believe leadership is. It's it's not speaking it. It's being it. It's being the, if you say I want to be the, if you talk about being the light, it's you say I want to be that light. I don't want to talk about that light. I want to be it. I've learned you can't speak love if you can't learn to be love first. If you want to, transcend people's consciousness if you want to transcend love and if you really want love to be reflected and it for love to really come across you've got to be love and you know i love stories so you're probably going to hear a lot of stories from me mm -hmm. and the best way i can summarize this point is i heard a story once it was a motivational speaker eric thomas Mm -hmm. And he was saying one time his friend came to him and his friend said, you know, E.T., I really admire your marriage. Mm -hmm. You've got so much love and affection. Your marriage is such a beautiful thing. How do you do it? And he said to his friend, he said, you know, when you look at me, you see me mopping the floor. You see me doing things for my wife. And he said, you know, you've got to learn 
to put the, the needs of your wife. You, you've got to put learn to put the needs of the marriage before yourself. And his friend went away. And Eric Thomas told him, you've got to do things for your wife. And his friend came back to him and he said, E.T., I tried to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I can't do it. He said, I felt like it felt above me. It didn't feel normal. He said, you know, when you tell me this, he said, you see me mopping on mopping the floor. You see me whipped. He said, I love nothing more than to be to be whipped by my wife or make me whipped. He said, I'm telling you this because you tell me you doing things for your wife makes you feel like a punk, makes you feel less than a man. He said, nothing is more important to me than my marriage. And mm -hmm. nothing is more important to me than my wife. And he said, my love for my marriage is displayed in my actions. He said, I just don't speak it. I do it. I demonstrate it in my actions. So I tell you this story because the best way we can demonstrate love and leadership, and this doesn't just go for society, this goes for the whole world. We need to demonstrate love in our actions. And this is something guys need to learn to do, is to learn to hug one another. I know a lot of guys will say, oh, hugging each other, that's weird. No, let's break down the barriers. And I say this to older guys who are listening. It isn't weak for a guy to hug each other. It isn't weak for a guy to cry. It takes strength to do all that. So if you want to be a leader and demonstrate love, Lead, be it in your actions. And that's the best way I can answer that question. I agree. Yes, it makes sense. But Christopher, as you said, okay, love is fine. If when the question comes about family, marriage, partner, wife, relation, okay. Mm -hmm. But generally, most of us, we are in service. So when a person is service and his only motto is to sell, so, or, or to get the order. So, how you think that the love has got relation with the client, where he has got relation with his product, that's all. So, what you would like to relate your thought that you just now shared with the present scenario that I told you, please. Now, with that scenario, I see that a lot in society. Mm -hmm. I see, I see selling. And I see love. And I see love and selling can't go together. Because mm -hmm. what I've learned is if you come from the intention to want to sell, mm -hmm. then that's that's not the intention you want to come from. I know people will say about oh, Chris selling, you've got to make money in this world. You, you need money. Now, I kind of look at it differently. I'm not saying you don't need money. I'm not saying you don't need to sell. But what I'm saying is when you sell, you shouldn't come from the intention of how can I get you to buy? How can I push you to spend your money? Because a lot of times when you want to sell, I've learned number one is you don't push people. You mm -hmm. don't force things on people. You don't say, oh, you really need this. If you really want to sell, just the way I sell is I offer, mm -hmm. I sell with love. I don't push people. I don't force them into it. We can sell without needing to sell. We just be true and genuine. I've learned being authentic. If you're authentic and you're truthful, you're true to your words. If you're authentic and truthful, you don't need to sell. If you're genuine in who you are, you don't need to sell. I, I think we need to come back to a different way with selling, which is you offer your services, but you come from a genuine space, a, a heartfelt space. You come mm -hmm. from an authentic space. And I know people say, oh, but what if I don't make the sale? The other person should not be a number to you. That's one thing I've learned in life is don't look at people as a number. Look at people as a person. Look at people as a 
divine being that they need that they that they need what you have to offer. But be genuine when you come from it. Because what I see in selling nowadays, to see genuine in selling, you don't see that nowadays. You see too much pushing. Yes. That's not the way to sell. Mm -hmm. You offer what it is you want to offer. You come from a genuine place and you don't push it on people. You say, you know, this is what I offer. I would really love it if it helps you. Give people a choice. I, I know people say, oh, but if you give them a choice, they won't make up their mind. No, give them a choice. But you can only give them a choice by showing them who you are. That's really what selling is, is I'm showing you who, you, who I am. I wear my heart on my sleeve for a reason. And I incorporate this in selling. I incorporate this in all areas of my life. What you see is what you get. I don't have no mask. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And I sell selling, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. And this is what I'm genuine about. And if you can come from that authentic hmm. and genuine place and you come from a place of, I really want to serve you, I really want to help you, then selling isn't selling anymore. It becomes a beautiful dance with the other person. Oh, lovely. You told something about uh, authenticity and truthfulness. So when a person is authentic, authentic and hmm. he's truthful, perhaps the selling or the process is not a mechanism. It becomes a dance, universal dance. Mm. Beautiful, lovely. What a lovely mm -hmm. definition you have given about the any work that a person is indulged. Lovely. Mm. Well, here is my next question for you. Mm -hmm. And that is, Christopher, you mentioned evolving mindset for the effective leadership. Isn't it? What yes. are some of the common limiting mindset that you encounter? And how do you help leaders to overcome them? Because just now I explained myself that, yes, a person when he comes with selling in on back of his head, he has 100% mindset for sell, sell, sell. And mm -hmm. you just now demonstrated that how the love can be replaced in his mind. So here, can you please tell me that what are some common limiting mindset you en encounter and how do you help leaders to overcome them? Please. Mm. Um, the common limiting mindsets I often hear people say, and surprisingly, they all are, there's not a lot of them because they often are only a couple of mindset limiting beliefs I've noticed. So you probably would have thought, oh, it will be heaps of um, beliefs, but it's actually not as much. So the common ones I come across I'll start off with the one that's the most common and I believe is the most universal. And I think I've seen it all throughout life. And I think it's the number one that if you were to ask a leader or anyone in general, if you ask them, I'm pretty confident they will say to you this limiting belief. Um, the limiting belief, number one, I reckon I, that is the most common is I'm not good enough. Now that is so common because and the reason it's common, because unfortunately in society, when a person's a baby, they get programmed all positive stuff. But as we get older, we get conditioned to believe we're not good enough. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we actually are good enough. We weren't put on this earth by accident and we weren't put on this just to make up the numbers. So the number one I always hear is I'm not good enough. And I, and I work with them and it's commonly, it comes from their past. Uh, often a lot of times I have to do rewiring of the mindset and quite often how I would fix that is often I, was, I would use timeline therapy. And that's a lot of the time is going into the event that's caused this belief in the first place. And then what I do is I get them to rise above that event yeah. of where this limiting belief came about. And then I get them to learn the lessons from this event. 
there's a reason I get them to rise above the event because if the, I get them to be in the event, they're going to be stuck in the negative emotions. So I get them to look, be rise above it so they can learn the lessons from it okay. and then they can shift their mindset to a positive mindset. And then often they come back and say, no, Chris, I am good enough. And I often say, why is that? Because I have a gift and I don't care what anyone else says. I've mm -hmm. been put on this earth for a reason. I'm not going to let anyone stop me. So that's number one, I'm not good enough. Or another one people say is people don't believe in me. Quite often people have been laughed at, they've been put down like, I'll be honest with you, when my speaking, I actually, there was a point in time where I actually didn't feel confident to get on a stage and speak. And the reason I tell you this is because I got put down about my voice so many times, the way I'm speaking. And so one please, time... Sorry to interrupt. Can you please, same thing, connect with a small story which will be more impactful Something about the you said the reward uh, rewarding your minds rewiring your mindset and the and the limited belief. So any small example that you can quote about this limiting belief that you could change and rewire the mindset of a person that led to better place or better success or better position. Probably one story I can think of is. Please. There was um, a friend I was doing some coaching with. Mm -hmm. And I was doing the, the timeline therapy with him. And we were going into the, the past events. And quite often he was telling me, he said, you know, Chris, I, I, I don't believe in myself. There was even a point he was saying, you know, I was questioning what was life worth living. And he was ready to give up on life, I remember. And I had to talk to him and I had to tell him, I said, you have so much to offer this world. Ooh. I said, if you just choose to believe in yourself, if you just choose to rewire what you're thinking about yourself. I said, why don't I? And then I tell him, I said, if you could tell me something positive about yourself, I said, what could you tell me? So I know the only way to shift them is you've got to get them to go positive. That's number one. And then when you get them to go positive, then you can get them to learn the lessons. And so when he learned the lessons, he was telling me, he said, Chris, you know, I feel good about myself. I, I believe in myself. And I said to him, I said, why is that? He said, because I believe I can achieve anything in this world. Good. I said, does it matter what people say to you? Are you worried about other people's opinions? And he said to me, he said, no, I, I don't care anymore. And I, I remember he also got married. And, you know, for a long time, he was looking for a wife. And it was great because he found his, his wife. And now he's in a happy place. Good, good, and good. I remember where he was before to where he is now. So... You know, that, that made me happy seeing that transformation in him. Yes, correct. Very correct. So to sum up, or, uh, there, are, there are hundreds of questions that I have from the audience, but uh, that is because of the time limitations okay. I have understood. Well, Christopher, you shared, you literally bombarded your talk with certain powerful words, which has 100% relation with the day-to-day -day life like love, leadership, action, authenticity, truthfulness, limited beliefs, and rewiring your mindset. Well, Christopher, I have got few more questions which I would love to get answer from you sure. in one or two words or in shortest possible way. We say these questions as a rapid fire questions and here are few rapid fire questions for you. And the first question that I would always ask, and I'm asking you to is, what book has most shaped your leadership philosophy? I would say the, the Four Agreements started my mm -hmm. journey. Oh, beautiful. Fine. And what is your surprising habit that 
fuels your creativity? I would say my surprising habit, mm -hmm. I was never into meditation before. So mm -hmm. that's what fuels me and connects me. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I think you might be know you might have seen my profile that yes, I am a meditation leader and I yes. love meditation. Mm -hmm. It's really a wonderful gift that mm. given and which can be practiced. Well, Christopher, can you please give one single life lesson that you have learned? The life lesson I've learned is that your circumstances don't determine your destination. Lovely. Yes, 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 yes. Your second chance determines your destination. Wow. And will you please share one favorite quote that inspires you most? The quote I like the most is, when you shine your light mm -hmm. in your darkest times, you give people mm -hmm. permission to shine their light. And that it gives them permission to shine their light onto others. And that's pretty much what I'm about. Yes, yes, yes. Fine, fine. And in your words, Christopher, can you define success? Success is how is lifting people up, not mm -hmm. what you have, is how many people have you lifted up and empowered. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So lifting others is more important for you, isn't it? Yes. Good, 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 good. Christopher, if you could instantly learn one new skill, then what would it be for you? If I could learn one skill, Mm -hmm. I think that that skill would it'll probably just keep learning to keep evolving. Um, I know learning never stops, so I, I'll just keep learning, just see what I can keep expanding my mindset with. Mindset to me is everything. So one new skill is maybe read more mindset books. See, I'm interested in also energy. Uh, medicine oh. so shamanism i wouldn't mind connecting with energy and playing with energy more beautiful well so let me sum up today's talk once again let me repeat a few of the words that you shared which have really penetrated everyone's mind not only mind mind heart and body and those words are love, leadership, action, authenticity, truthfulness, limiting belief. And most important that I loved was rewiring your mindset. Christopher, really, you made my day. Mm -hmm. The lovely presentation I have, I had today. Beautiful. So nice of you. We would love to have you again and again. Once again, because of time limit, we are unable to ask you a few more questions. But the whatever you shared was really so authentic and so lovable that I really relished it. <laughs> Once again, thank you, Christopher. See you soon. Wish you a very best of best journey in your life. We say namaste. So a big mm -hmm. namaste to you. Namaste, thank you, Dinesh. Thank, thank you so much. So much. See you soon.